In today's notes, we're going to be using trigonometry to find a missing angle. In the day three notes, we were using trigonometry to find the measure of a side. So in our notes today, we're going to be given the measure of two sides of a right triangle, and we're going to find the measure of one of the two acute angles, which we typically represent with theta. On the calculator, we're going to be using these buttons right here. And it is a poor picture, so above it I want to write the buttons that we're going to use. So to find an angle, we're going to use the inverse sine button, which is the sine with the exponent of negative 1. And then the cosine, again with the exponent of negative 1. And then tan with the exponent of negative 1. If we go to the calculator, uh, and looking at the sine, cosine, and tangent, if you look above it, you see that inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tan. Inverse meaning the opposite of finding the side would be finding the angle, uh, but you do see the sine to the negative 1. So in order to hit or use that inverse sine, you have to press the second button first. So there's second sine, second cosine, second tan, and we'll be using those buttons momentarily, okay? So we're going to do the first, uh, we're gonna, the, sa the steps are the same as the day three notes. You first have to identify the placement of the sides with respect to the angle that's given. And then from there, you can decide which trig ratio to use. So remember, sine is the ratio, so sine of an angle is the ratio of the length of the side opposite to the hypotenuse. The cosine ratio, so cosine of an angle, uh, is equal to the side adjacent to the hypotenuse. And then tangent, the TOA, let's write that a little bit neater. So the tangent, of an angle is equal to the ratio of the length of the side opposite to that of the adjacent, okay? So you need three, uh, we have three parameters or three missing parts that we have to find or the three parts that we know uh, or do not know in order to find a missing part. So we need an angle and two sides, an angle and two sides, an angle and two sides, whether one of those is unknown or not. We substitute these values into the trig equation, and then we calculate our missing side, or in this case today, we're going to evaluate theta or find the missing angle, okay? But yeah, most important when you're doing any work with trig, so let's open up your calculator and press mode to make sure you are still in degree mode. So this one is set. Anytime you reset the calculator, um, second plus sign 712 or press the button on the back. Whenever you go to mode, it's going to go back to radian mode. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to turn degrees on again. Second quit mode. I just like to double check that. All right, so let's look at examples or example one with the three trig equations. So define the value of theta. So we don't have a picture here, we don't have to set anything up. These are all set up for us, okay? So to find theta, go to the calculator. So I wanna see that theta equals, in each case, because all we're gonna do is press button on the calculators. But I would like you to show this uh, step, or this statement, as well as um, the regents. So we're gonna press the inverse sign button and then we're gonna type in the ratio two thirds. So this is looking for the angle whose sine ratio is two thirds. And let's write them all. And then we'll go back and write in the angle measures. Here we'll do the inverse cosine of eight over 21. And then the inverse tan of 17 sixteenths. Okay, now let's open the calculator. So the first one, the inverse sine. Let's get out of the mode. So press second sine, 
and type in the ratio of two thirds. Now you can type it in as you see it, or you can do, again, second sign, and then do the alpha y equals to have it written vertically. And we get 41.8103149. And we're going to round to the nearest degree. So I'm going to write down the full decimal. And then again, so if I'm rounding to the nearest degree, that would be approximately 42 degrees. Now, if you want to check your answer, okay, so what this is saying, if you go back and you plug in the 40, whoops, I'm going to grab the pen. If you plug in the 42 for theta, so if we check that, the sine of 42 we're not going to get um, exactly two-thirds, which is 0.66 repeating. And that's because we ended up rounding our answer. But if we type in the sine of that angle, because this is the exact, where this is an approximation, we'll get the two-thirds. So let's actually do that. So second sine, and let's go up and grab the exact answer from that second line. So hit enter to bring it down. Now let's take the inverse sine of that and we should get, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna clear that. I just wanted to do sine of that angle, not inverse, I apologize. So sine of that angle is exactly two thirds. It's just rounding that last uh, decimal place is the calculator always does that as it can't obviously fit the, uh, or every decimal place. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the middle one. So let's move the calculator over. And to find theta or the angle, I'm going to clear that. We hit second uh, cosine to get the cosine of negative 1 or the inverse of 8 divided by 21. And our angle rounded is approximately um, 68 degrees. But remember, if you type in the cosine of 68, we're not going to get the decimal value for 8 21st. You can go math, enter, enter. Oh, it wouldn't change it to a fraction. So let's see what 8 over 21 equals as a decimal. Yeah, they're not going to be the same because I'm not typing in, uh, let's do the cosine and go up and grab the exact answer. And we should get the decimal value for 8 over 21. Now you can see they match, okay? So let's write out the decimal first and then we'll show the approximated value. So it was exactly 67.6. 0731219. So to the nearest degree, that's approximately 68 degrees. And the last one is the inverse tan of 1716. So it's 46.73. 570459. So that's the nearest degree, that's approximately 47 degrees. So one last time, let me explain this. That would be if we went up and plugged the angle in for theta. So the tangent of 47 should be 17 sixteenths. So if we go to the calculator, uh, the tangent of 47 degrees, there's that decimal, 17 sixteenths is that decimal. They're not exactly the same, but close, okay? But if I went back in and hit tangent of my exact answer, I should get the 1.0625. There we are, okay? Down to number two. Find the area of the regular polygon to the nearest tenth. 
Well, let's first break it up into triangles to see how many triangles we have. So here's one, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to take the, to find the area of the polygon, that's going to be seven times the area of one of those triangles. So let's, I'm going to redraw that triangle right here. And we have an altitude of five feet. And I know, okay, we have two right angles there because of the altitude. And like we said before, this is isosceles because the distance from the center of the polygon to any of its vertices, that's the same. Okay, and in any isosceles triangle, the altitude bisects the base. Okay, so I don't know any other measurement, but remember we can find the measure of one of these angles because they're all the same. That's a full 360 degrees. So if we take, so I'm going to call this angle theta. So 360 divided by 7, okay, let's go to the calculator, 360 divided by 7, math, enter, enter, it's irrational, so we just have to leave it 360 over 7. But in this triangle over here, okay, so if I call that y, y is going to be half of 360 divided by 7. So half of 360 over 7 is going to be sometimes 1 half. You can go to the calculator. Times 0.5. Math, enter, enter, is 180 over 7. So this angle here is 180 over 7 degrees. Okay, so we're going to leave that as a fraction or as a rational number. So what I need to find the area of the triangle, I have the altitude. I need the length of this base. So we're going to look at one of the two right triangles within this isosceles triangle. And I'm actually going to call this x. And using this triangle, I'm going to find x. Okay. I cannot use Pythagorean theorem because I don't have two sides, but I do have an angle and two sides, so I can use trigonometry. And in, um, if I look at where the angle is, I have the side opposite and the side adjacent, which is tangent. So let's on the calculator find the value of x by doing the tangent of the angle, which is 180 over 7 degrees, equals x over 5. So in writing that trick equation, now I have to solve for x. So the opposite of multiplying x by 5, or dividing by 5, is multiplying. Okay, so let's go to the calculator. And 5 times the tangent I will use that alpha y equals of 180 divided by 7. Uh, math, enter, enter. Oh, it's going to leave it as a um, decimal. However, um, I need the whole base of the triangle, which is really all the way across 2x. So I'm going to, because I need to plug it in over here for my base, I'm just going to multiply it by 2 and leave it as a uh, statement with trig. So 2 times 5 tangent of 180 over 7 would be 10 tangent of 180 over 7. And I could round, right? But I want to be precise with my answer. So I don't want to round until the very end. So this 10 tangent of 180 over 7 is my b and 1 half a base times height. 
because the base was 2 times whatever x was. And x was 5 times the tangent of 180 over 7. So now over here, and then we can round to the nearest tenth at the very end. So we're going to have um, 1 half or 7 times 1 half base times height. So the base is 10 tan. Let me get rid of some of that arrow. 10 tan of 180 over 7. So that's 1 half of base um, times the height. Okay, so I'm going to multiply all of the numbers. So 7 times 5, for instance, is 35, and 35 over 2 is 35 halves. So now in the calculator, I'm going to do 35 halves times the, um, well, actually, I could also multiply by 10 as well. But since I didn't write it, I'll do that times the 10 tan of 180 over 7. Okay, so let's go to the calculator. Let me move that off to the side. Whoops, I still want to keep it minimized. I just want to move it a little. There we go. So now alpha y equals, and I want 35 over 2. Or you can write the decimal, it's up to you. Times, so times 10 tan of 180 over 7. Okay, so I'm write the final or then I'm going to write the decimal before I write that final answer rounded. So that was 84.27555829. Rounded to the nearest tenth, it's approximately 84.3. What we're trying to find area, so that's going to be in units squared, and our unit is... Okay, number three, find the value of x and y to the nearest tenth. So x is this angle right here, which is a part of this triangle, and y is this angle here, which is a part of this triangle in red. Both right triangles, they're just overlapping. So if I look at the red one, I see I have an angle on two sides where I look at the blue and I just have an angle on one side. So I'm going to start by finding y, okay? So according to the angle, I have the side opposite and I have the hypotenuse. So I'm going to get rid of that arrow for now. So the sine of y equals opposite of 22 over 40. So using that, I can find the measure of angle y by doing the inverse sine of 22 fortieths. So second sine, uh, I guess I'll use the alpha y equals 22 over 40. And the angle is 33.36, so the nearest tenth, that's going to be approximately 33 point four. So y equals thirty three point three six seven. I will just put the dot 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 because I only need to know what's to the right of the three for the dot tens place. So y is three point four and since it's an angle that's measured in degrees. I can also, um, if I look at the red triangle, I can't find x just yet because I don't have another side. But if we look at the red triangle, we have the hypotenuse is 40, a leg is 22, and I can find the missing leg of this one. I can use trig, but I can also use um, the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to call that z. So z equals, 
the square root of, it's a lay, so it's equal to the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the square of the other lay. So that equals the square root of 1,116. And the largest perfect square factor, um, let's look at the calculator. Well, I can see 9, so 9 times 124, which would be 3 radical 124. But then 124 is also divisible by 4. So since I didn't find the largest perfect square, I have to reduce again. But this is a good practice with radicals. So this again is 4 times 31. So 3 square root of 4 is connected by multiplication, as is this. But I can multiply 3 times the square root of 4 because that's 3 times 2. So this is 6 radical 31. Okay? So z is 6 radical 31. So z equals 6 radical 31. And it's telling me also in the picture that this part of z is equal to that part. So that point there must be a midpoint. So now I know if the whole is 6 radical 3, I take half of, or 6 radical 31 rather, take half of 6 radical 31, and this is going to be 3 radical 31, and this segment is going to be 3 radical 31. Now, in the blue triangle, I have two sides in order to calculate angle x using trig. And according to x, we have the side opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. So the tangent of x equals 3 radical 31 is opposite, and the 22 is adjacent. So x equals inverse tan of 3 radical 31 over 22. And this is where we'll want to use that alpha y equals button. So I'm going to clear everything. And second, tangent, alpha y equals, so we can type in that radical, 3 square root of 31 over 22. Close it, and there's our value for x. So x equals uh, 37.207. So rounding to the nearest tenth, so we'll put the dot, 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 because that does keep going. x is approximately 37.2 degrees. And the last one, number four. The accompanying diagram shows a flagpole that stands on level ground. Two cables, R and S, are attached to the pole at 16 feet above the ground. You can read that, but I'm actually, it's kind of blurry. I don't know if it's blurry on your paper. So I'm going to take the white pen and get rid of that. That. And I can kind of see that, but I'm going to mark my picture up based on the wording of the question. So we had cables R and S. So here are the two cables. And it said they're attached to the pole 16 feet above the ground. Good. The combined length of the two cables, so if it says the combined length, that means when you add the two cables, we get 50 feet. If cable R is attached to the ground 12 feet from the base, so here's where it's attached, here's the base, there's 12 feet. What is the measure of angle X to the nearest degree? So here's our angle X. Okay, well if I knew at, or if I knew S, I could find um, X by using opposite to hypotenuse the sine ratio. So how can we find S? Well, we must have to go back to this statement right here. So if I know R, I can find S. So over here in this triangle, 
R, it's a uh, hypotenuse of a right triangle. And 1612, is it a triple? Uh, or 12, 16, rather, in order. Is it a triple? Well, we know the 3, 4, 5. It's 3 times 4, 16 times 4, yeah. So 5 times 4, R is 20. So it is a Pythagorean triple. And if S plus 20 equals 50, S must be equal to 30. Awesome. So now that I know S is 30, I can use this right triangle to find X. Once again, we have the side opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So the sine of X equals 16 over 30. Because X is the angle, I want to uh, use the inverse sine button. So inverse sine of 16 thirtieths. And are we rounding? Yes, to the nearest degree. So opening up the calculator, we do the inverse sine of 16 divided by 30. So 32.23, let's write that down. 0, 9, 5, 2, 6, 4. To the nearest degree, it would be 32 degrees. And that's it for day four.